Hi everyone. Well, it's Crafting Thursday and someone set me a challenge. <laughs> it's, uh, I, can, I can honestly say that this particular challenge to create a tree of life really did wreck my brain. I, I did a heap of research. I looked for inspiration on a, in a couple of different places and it just wasn't kind of coming to me. And I think this was, this was actually a really cool thing to experience because I think you've actually got to come up with the idea and concept yourself to really feel it um, and, and to kind of have a rough idea and, and a pre-visualization, whereas a challenge really pushed me in a way that I haven't actually been challenged before. Um, from that creative standpoint, I mean, obviously, you know, we come up with ideas and we try to execute them and sometimes they don't work. So that's a challenge, but this was a different type of challenge. And I believe that it was because I would never have thought to make this. <laughs> it's not something that I had ever considered previously. So creating a tree of life um, was, yeah, it was out of this, this world. So you can see down here beside me on the floor, I've sort of already started to put a few things together here um, to make obviously this live a little bit faster than most of my previous DIYs because they take so much time and I know that not everyone's got or wants to sit in front of the computer or listen to me for, for hours on end. So um, what I've done is I've kind of mapped it out and I'm gonna talk you through that process. But when I am making something that I'm going to put a baby in, there are a few different things that we need to consider. So in the back of my mind, I'm always going to, number one, want to make sure that the baby is going to remain the main focus of the photograph and that all of the other elements that I use are not going to take away from the baby. They're not going to overpower the baby and the baby is not going to get lost with inside the, the entire setup. Good morning, everyone, or good night, wherever you are. Um, so when I was trying to come up with this um, or try to execute this tree of life, I'm thinking to myself, right, what do I have um, so that I don't need to go out and buy a heap of different things? I did go and buy a couple of things, which are just these little love hearts and they're little polystyrene pre-cut love hearts. So next to my supermarket is one of those cheap shops um, that sell pretty much everything. And they have an amazing craft section. So I bought some of these because I thought to myself, I've already made a love heart and I'm going to show you some of the some some screenshots of um, different trees of life that have given me some inspiration in a moment. But I thought to myself, what can I use that I already have to make this? Because being on lockdown, obviously not needing to go out to to do things that aren't essential. I've got to be really considerate of that. Plus, if this is something that I'm not going to use on a regular basis in my studio, I don't want to invest a lot of money into it. So I'm using paper and paper I've got a lot of here at the studio. Um, I've, you know, I've got, uh, you know, some thicker paper and I've already made my love heart, like I said. So I had a gray seamless roll, which is going to be perfect as my background. I can draw on it. I can hot glue things to it and then I can cut that piece off and I'm done. So um, yeah, it, there was a bit of thought going into it in terms of obviously the baby, where it's going to be positioned within the frame, um, how I'm going to use the different elements to create leading lines that are going to draw you back into the subject. And that's a, that's a big thing when it comes to composition because we always want to make sure that the different elements that we add to a setup um, keep the viewer engaged, keep them with inside the frame. I've gone with a circle here, but I am naturally drawn to a more circular composition. And I love the way that a circle brings you around on a bit of a journey. So the, when I came up with my little idea, and this is my drawing here, um, I did share it last night. Let's see if I can zoom in. <laughs> um, anyway, we might we might share that later, but uh, I want to 
I want to sort of bring the branches, I suppose, around in that circular frame, which was what I was referring to, and then obviously continue with all of the lines to, to make your eye continue to go around the image and keep you engaged. So, this one? yeah, let's start with that one. So these are some of the ideas that I found that I loved. Now, every time I looked at one of these, I thought to myself, and obviously I've been on Pinterest, you can see my little screenshot there. Every spare second I had, I'd just jump on and, and you know, get my brain sort of to stay within that, um, you know, that idea and, and start getting some concepts together. And obviously, you know, with the resources that I've got, um, I needed to think about how I could make any of these and, and obviously make it safe and, um, and so forth for the baby. The, um, those two there, I'm quite fascinated right now with paper quilling and it's actually very hard to do. <laughs> I've got a couple of digital backdrops that I already have um, on newbornposing.com that's got some paper quilling in it where I've used that to, to add different features which I thought was a lot of fun. And when I did a DIY, oh, when was that? A couple of weeks ago and I used toilet roll um, the the center of the the cardboard center of the toilet rolls and i cut those and that's another style of quilling as well made some flowers out of them so i thought do you know what this is something that i already already love to do and am wanting to learn how to do it even more so i thought why not um use paper to obviously do that but then these two um that, that garrett's got up there now which one are you looking at now uh, the, we are looking at the gray one the gray one so yeah it's just again how the trunk and the the branches and everything take you around in that circular shape which is what i loved and they've obviously incorporated the yin and yang symbol there which was pretty cool but um yeah going back to this one this was the idea that i loved so i thought let's try and create something like that and then obviously use the quilling um, techniques from the previous paper ones and uh, and see what we can come up with so yeah sitting and drawing this last night was a bit of a a bit of a challenge um, I love doodling but I'm not a very good drawer so <laughs> and I do love to draw out all of my concepts and ideas because uh, I think that's when you're actually physically drawing it that's when you start to um, yeah, come up with ways on how you are going to pull it off. All right, there's lots of people joining us. I can see in the comments we've we got. We have 80, 89 people oh. um, joining us. Now, do us a favor and tag some people that are already in the group that know that they want to watch this. Because <laughs> we, we do see the comments from time to time. Oh my gosh, I missed it. And interacting live, there's nothing better. So make sure you tag somebody in the group to let yeah, them know. Yeah, we that the love lives are. seeing all the conversations that happen in the comments. We love seeing your questions. So please, if you have any questions at all, and you know what? I'm I'm probably going to regret saying this, but Robert said to me this morning, make sure you ask people for new challenges. <laughs> so I am scared asking, but if you've got something that you would love to see made, an idea, a concept, throw it out there and I will... Uh, I'll see how we go. <laughs> All right, but we've got a lot of craft to do today. Garrett is going to read your questions to me if you have them. Um, but like all, all videos, they are staying here in the group. So if you can't, you know, stay with me for the entire session, then you can come back and rewatch. You can fast forward as well through all the boring bits. But I am going to use um, some hot glue, but definitely not like the paper flower that I made where we had to hot glue hundreds of petals. Alrighty, so I'm gonna talk you through what I've already done here. So if you missed the video where I created the love heart out of pool noodles, you can find that in the video section of the group. Garrett's even put a document in the files section with links to all of those videos. And it's in um, under announcements as well in the group. So you can find that there. Uh, I wanted the love heart to be in the middle of this frame because that's where I'm going to put the baby. And then I want to use the branches um, and the quilling technique to sort of surround it in that circular shape. So what I did to start with was I measured how big I want this prop to be. And when I did it at home, I did it um, um, 15 centimetres in 
um, diameter, yeah, yeah, 15 centimeters in diameter. So basically I've just scaled this up. So my circular shape here is roughly three pool noodles across and it's 1.5 meters. So I had measured the pool noodle um, love heart and then decided that I want to have obviously enough space around it, but not too much space so that it becomes too small in the frame. But um, yeah, I've gone one and a half meters in diameter there. And I just to do that, I got Garrett to hold my little bit of string in the middle um, of the paper and I just went around the, um, around the, the paper and drew my circle. <laughs> Don't know how else to say that. <laughs> and then I have pre-cut um, a lot of my cardboard pieces here my strips so they are the same width of one pool noodle so they won't be as high off the ground when I'm doing this technique they'll sit half the height of my love heart did think about making love making another love heart and only making it one you know one high one pool noodle high but this is two but if I did that there wouldn't be enough enough depth to put a baby in there so I did need the height but then I thought well I don't need to make my my pieces of paper the same height as that I could have but I didn't I don't need to because I don't want the baby or the prop to get lost I do want that to stand out the most so we've cut those 70 centimeters uh, sorry seven centimeters in width which is the height of one pool noodle and then what I did was with a pencil I rolled you could do it with something like this, where you just sat and I rolled and twisted that cardboard into these lovely circular shapes. So I've already pre-done that so I don't need to worry about it. And then with just normal printer paper, like A4 paper, I've done it with some um, normal paper there so I can get a tighter curl for some of those smaller um, branches that I wanted to create there. And then Tony, I can you just show us the, um, the the larger ones and just kind of do a bit of an unfold of one oh, to yeah. kind of show us exactly what it is. It's just we don't have best camera angles today because this is a huge, huge setup. Okay, so towards our camera here. There we go. Beautiful. So I just used a, a pencil at home and I twisted these. It was actually quite therapeutic. <laughs> and then um, as I go to lay these out, I'm just going to gently unravel them. when I go to put them down and stretch them out um, when I am placing them down on the on the paper and I'll hot glue those down. So yeah, I've got some that have been curled and some that haven't and I, I, went, I made more than I probably need just so that I've got that excess. What else I've done down here is that I wanted to make the trunk um, obviously come down and reach the edge of the the circle here so i've already pre-cut that and i did sit down with my drawing and with a pencil i've already which you probably will not be able to see from the above shot but i've already come and drawn where i'm going to place my branches so i've just basically penciled it in and you know what Photoshop is very, um, very good in that aspect because I'll be able to remove those really easy if I can see them in my photograph. But I did it quite light so that, you know, it's not going to be too noticeable. Alrighty, so I kind of want to get started here. Let's I'm, I'm going to plug my hot glue gun in. And I'm, to start with, I'm going to place my, my long branches down to start to get a bit of an idea about the shape. I even bought myself a new hot glue gun, <laughs> the small things. But that crafting store um, that I go to next to my supermarket, uh, they do know me on a first name basis. <laughs> You've now got 362 hot glue guns. I do. Yeah. <laughs> you can never have enough, okay? Now, this is probably not going to be the most glamorous um, arts and crafts session because I, don't think I craft is supposed to be glamorous is it no i will be down on my hands and knees and bending over a fair bit so i apologize all right so obviously i'm going to have some for my trunk all right Mm. 
And don't forget to pop some questions if you've got them. And it doesn't have to be about art and craft. It can be about anything because I can talk while I do this stuff. Oh, a music note tutorial. So, so maybe something how to make a like a music note. That oh, could that be could be cool. kind of cool. Um, there's another one here from Deborah. How to make a quarter moon to put a baby in. Oh, like a crescent moon. Like a crescent moon, yeah. Oh, that could be very cool. I like that. Now we've got a hundred. We're up to a hundred people. Holy smokes! I reckon Hi, we can everyone. get to two hundred today with a little bit of help. <laughs> I think it's not always great for a lot of people who live on the other side of the world this oh, time of day. Sleep, really? <laughs> you know, we don't need sleep, do we? Okay, are we going to are we going to guess how many times Kelly Brown is going to burn herself with a hot glue gun? <laughs> many today. Who do you think put that in there? Uh, Robert? Robert Brown. Yes, he's going with uh, 15 times. Oh dear. I don't have a, um, a verbal sensor um, sound, so please don't. <laughs> this is looking really cool from the aerial. Uh, I'm actually really excited about this. Uh, no, I think I'll be able to use one of the long ones over there. Yeah, they're all a bit straight yet. I've got to curl them and then obviously add the other bits to it. And you know what? This could be an epic fail. No, I don't think it's going to be. <laughs> because I think the beauty with what how you've set it up, because that background's paper, you're just going to hot glue straight to it, aren't you? Yeah. Just to keep everything in place. It's going to look good. Oh, look at that. Isn't that two stuck together? It is, no. That one just felt a bit thicker than the others. All right, so they're my main branches. And then with the curled pieces, this is just gonna be, some I'll wanna keep really curled and then others I'll kinda wanna stretch out. and pop those down in different places, but yeah. I asked one of my kids if they wanted to come and help me today and they were like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks, Ma. No, I'll be okay, they said. All right, that'll stretch out. Anyway, so I'm gonna come down with my hot glue gun I've already got some pieces cut here, ready to go as well. Oh, here we go. Question for you. Um, not about crafting, about um, going to client homes. So when you went to client homes, did you use natural light or did you bring lights to their house? How did you manage to keep your photos looking consistent? Ooh, that was tricky. Well. It was very tricky um, because <laughs> I, you know, when you do go to client homes, I, I learnt the hard lesson very quickly uh, in terms of the communication process with my clients prior to the session. I, that's probably the the key there because you do need to know what sort of space you're going into. Yeah. And, um, and what I, I'm gonna have this spider web stuff go everywhere here. But um, yeah, you do need to know the space that you're going into. So my advice is to um, always ask your clients to send you a photograph of, you know, the area that you can use to set up in. Mm -hmm. And they don't mind doing that. I'm going to have hot glue everywhere. All right, so yeah, I'm just going to kind of tack this down in a few spaces. 
and can you do just a little bit of a recap for those who are joining us late, what it is that you're actually using, like all the materials? So I'm basically just using paper and cardboard here to create um, my tree of life. And I'm gonna work on the trunk area first. Just going to walk in front of one of the cameras and get a get a bit of a better angle here, get some close-ups oh, yeah. of what Kelly's doing. This hot glue gun is very runny. <laughs> But yeah, if I come around the edge here first. Ah, look at that, that looks amazing. Do this one over here now. Try and get as close as I can to that. This is probably not going to be something that I would have out in the studio. <laughs> um, I'd have to try and figure out a way to put it away. But in saying that, um, you know, I would be better off creating something like this and making a digital out of it so that I could offer it to my clients with, um, without having to set it up every time and store it so and being you know obviously worried about it being damaged but yeah if um if someone came to me and they wanted a concept an idea like this obviously i'm going all out here and making it quite elaborate but um you know you could do it slightly different as well you could do it with wool you could do it um with quite a few different mediums, really. Um, I've got a question for you. Um, okay, when you're making large props like this, would you use this for one family or many, or would you make the prop into a digital? So, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. Like, um, I would definitely turn this into more of a a digital um, because trying to store something like this would be quite quite tricky and you wouldn't want it out in the studio you know where toddlers and things like that could basically damage it I suppose but yeah I'd probably make it shoot it and then offer it to my clients if that was the style of photography that I you know I was wanting to create I'm kind of enjoying this. <laughs> but yeah, how's everybody liking the new website? We've seen so much great feedback on it. We are so happy with it. We had it custom built um, based off everyone's feedback and you know their experiences with our previous website. And Where to put those shorter pieces? Oh, right there in front of me. Oh. <laughs> so when you're creating these 
props, when do you think about how you're going to light it and would your design change to suit? Fantastic question because lighting, when you are coming up with an idea and a concept, is always going to be you know, something that you, you really do need to consider. Um, when I am coming up with, with these ideas, light is, is probably one of the most important aspects in terms of how you create drama and impact and how are you going to light the subject when you are working with quite a big sort of area um, in terms of the size of something like this. And having a lot of white here means I'm going to need to, to light it in a way that, um, you know, it's not too contrasty, but at the same time, I'm going to want to work with a lot of the shadows, which is going to give it depth with this particular technique that I'm using. Oh God, I've got hot glue going everywhere. <laughs> and like, I'm, I'm not following any particular pattern. I'm just kind of placing these pieces down to see where they're gonna look good. Can you see, see this bit from above? Is it easy to see? Yeah. Yeah. Down the bottom there, um, it's it's a bit harder to to zoom in. But let's give people that aerial shot just so they can see where it's where it's kind of up to. You can kind of see there in the shadows where Kelly's hands are right now, the different pieces coming down. It's going to look stunning. I hope so. <laughs> I do love um, making different things. Now, Midori says the new website is beautiful and easy to go into where you want. Yay, that's what we want to hear. The whole user experience, making it easier for everyone, and you will notice the speed. <laughs> I think it was about 10 o'clock at night when we, when we did the original... Um, oh. When we did the original go live and Rob's messages to me were quite explicit as to how excited he was about the, the speed of the new site, so you will appreciate that. <laughs> oh, this is a good question. Um, if someone requests something like this set up and it takes a lot more time to execute materials, all that, etc., would you charge more for this sort of thing? So this would depend, yeah. I would, depending on, you know, obviously how elaborate you want to make your setups um, and how much time it's going to take you to make something like this would, obviously, you would need to consider how you would charge for it. Um, for me, when I'm working with some of my clients, if they're returning clients, if I know their story, if they have, um, you know, something that's really, you know, they've really sort of had to overcome or go through throughout their pregnancy, then, you know, I might sort of consider creating something purely just for them. I'm just going to extend this piece here a bit. Um, and, and I wouldn't charge them any extra, but it does depend um, on the circumstance. It depends on, you know, whether or not you are creating something for awards or whether you um, have been commissioned to create something that is a little bit more unique. Mm -hmm. But yeah, depending on your budget and what they wanted, you would price that accordingly. So yeah, you've got to work out what your hourly rate is ideally because it's basically time if you set a budget to you know spend on all of the different elements then you know you would factor that into the cost of what you would charge a client but then you've got to think about how many hours it's going to take you to make it now I probably spent about an hour researching this particular thing in total it was just like five minutes here ten minutes there and then I'm just waiting for that hot glue to dry there. And then, um, and then last night I probably spent about two hours cutting out and twisting. 
So if you think about it in that aspect, you should be able to um, factor in, you know, your hourly rate and what you would charge. So if my hourly rate is, say, $150, $200 an hour, then I'm going to allocate five hours to making something like this and as well as um, the time to source all of the materials. and then charging it that way if they wanted something unique and special. This is awesome. Um, so Tenille's just said that she used to do quilling as a little girl. Never thought to turn it into a prop. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> Yay. I do love um, a good challenge, but uh, I must admit this was not one that I was overly excited about because I just didn't know how to do it. I suppose it's the thought process. It's like, well, I've never done that before, so it's breaking it down. How am I going to make it work? What's the construction going to be like? And then, of course, everything comes back to the safety of the baby. So it's like, I'm sure you thought of some really elaborate things and got um, turned away by safety aspects. Uh, absolutely. Oops. It's this sort of stuff that I could see like hanging on walls. It's Yeah, when you start to look at what is on Pinterest and how clever some people are, oh my God. Okay. So the trunk's probably gonna take the longest, my apologies. Everyone's a little quiet today. Yeah. And keep in mind, you can ask whatever questions you want while Kelly does this sort of stuff. It doesn't need to be about the prop that she's making, but um, bring it on through. So yesterday we had Michelle join us. Um, live we talked a lot about file storage setting up a process that's easy to follow that glue is just taking a bit to dry there and um, tomorrow our live is going to be the image critique so what i'm going to do is um, share a link this afternoon in the group probably be around 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. It's currently 11 a.m. or just after 11 a.m. And um, that link will be for people to upload a photograph for me to critique during tomorrow's image critique. And it is the first 20 images received. Mandy from the UK here, so um, how much time during your work week would you dedicate to doing this sort of work, I suppose, yep, um, competi or competition work um, when you are really busy? Or, that, yeah, well yeah, that's Would you thing. just do it in your spare time? You, you like, have do you take to, this you out have of to, business? You have to allocate time in your schedule to do things like this. And I think it's really important that you do allocate time for personal projects because it keeps you inspired, it keeps you, um, you know, using the other side of your brain because if we're focused purely on business all the time, you know, we can get a little burnt out, we can lose our, our you know, our creative mojo, I suppose, and, um, and feel a little flat. So you do have to dedicate time to yourself just to stay inspired and, um, and keep creating. It, it is really good for the soul, I can tell you. I can, I can tell in the studio after Kelly's made something like this, it's almost like the, the engine's revved again, you know? If there's a, a period of time where you don't do this sort of stuff, it does yeah. kind of, ah, you know, slow All right, down. so it's starting to come together. I am something a little bit- really great. A little bit excited. And, but there's a lot of hot glue going everywhere. Uh, that's what Photoshop's for. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> a 
the patch tool is going to be my friend, that's for sure. So yeah, you could make this obviously off the background, um, but yeah, for the sake of doing it live and sharing this with you. So I think I'm done with my trunk. I might end up adding one more piece just up here. What I'm gonna do here is attach this bit first. Yeah, who would have thought? Paper. Okay, so yeah, carrying on um, tomorrow's image critique. Uh, the first 20 images that um, are submitted, I will be critiquing um, here in the group during my tomorrow's live. And on Monday, we are going to have a special guest with us. I keep saying special guest, but all of the people that we have join us is, are special. Um, <laughs> and we're going to talk all about contracts, agreements, what you need to know from a legal aspect when working with clients. And um, I think that is going to be incredibly valuable. Now I don't want to stick anything to my prop because I can use the Love Heart prop for something else. So I don't want to make this a permanent attachment of this particular setup. So I'm not touch, I'm, you know, it's still not attached there. But I think my trunk is done. I've got a question from Casey. Do you find that preferring to shoot solely indoors is a business negative? I have a deadly allergy to all stinging insects, so oh. shooting outdoors just gives me anxiety, which is understandable, yes. Absolutely. Um, but I'm afraid of losing clients. How do you find it? Do you know, I used to do a lot of outdoor shoots and I found, um, you know, you, it, and it is personal, do you know, um, you, I found that, you know, you're always kind of basing everything on nature, you know, the weather and, and things like that, different times of the day, you've got insects, you've got wildlife, uh, snakes and things like that. And I remember being eaten alive with Garrett in a park by these little tiny midges. Never been so itchy in it my took life. Us months to recover. <laughs> and um, and so yeah, there are a lot of things to obviously consider when you are working outside. Um, but yeah, I chose to be a studio photographer. Whoa, can't remember how long ago it was now. And I now only do shoots inside my studio. And I find I have a lot more control. My clients are in and out. I don't have to worry about the weather. And yeah, but um, it, you know, you could look at it in a way that it limits you, but do you know what, if that's, if, if you have a style of photography that's really well suited to studio portraits, then you just do you and, and don't worry about anything else. I, I saw a massive increase in my, um, my sessions because, you know, they were also a little bit more flexible when you think about when you do family portraits outside, there are certain hours of the day that are better suited to photographing outdoors. And I don't want to be photographing at sunrise and I certainly don't want to be photographing just before sunset. Um, I'd rather be sitting at home with a glass of wine in my hand. <laughs> so it is a personal preference, but my clients also aren't always going to be, um, you know, up for those early, early hour sessions. But it is entirely up to you. Kelly, could you just recap again um, when the critique um, submissions will be open? So 4 p.m. this afternoon, Australian Eastern Standard Time, I will share a link here in the group for anyone that's interested to submit a photograph. Deborah says that she's going to start playing the lottery so she can 
win and go to a live event, she needs a hug. Ah, oh, yay. <laughs> well, hopefully everything will go back to normal soon and, you know, lots of different photography events will start running again. A lot have been cancelled. I think I'm supposed to be in India right now and teaching there and then um, I was supposed to be in the UK in May teaching there and that got cancelled or well, postponed. Oh, we're starting to see some shape here with branches. Once the branches are down, I think we're going to be pretty good. Yeah. I do need to sit up a little bit higher though so I can see more. Excuse me while I get up so graciously. I'll keep the aerial shot on while you um, <laughs> grace, grace, gracious, gracious. I may end up putting oh, another so. couple of pieces down inside that trunk there, but um, as we kind of come around, Yeah, we've got quite a few things planned for next week, which will be fun. Um, I think I'm going to do the maternity gown. Somebody asked if I could um, make a maternity gown or convert one. I have been make. I've got two new patterns that are just about ready to go up, as well. Uh, one's a romper and and a little bonnet and then there's two uh, different lengths of sleeves that can be added to the the romper. Ah, Francesca's got a good question here. Um, I'd like to start submitting images to some awards. How would you decide if your images are good enough and which competitions would you start with? Big ones, small ones, local Do you know, ones? I, I would start small and start with ones that offer feedback which is one of the reasons why we created the RISE Awards and uh, we are actually going to, um, entries were supposed to open earlier this month and we decided to hold off but we are going to open up uh, entries soon. I think maybe September, wasn't it? September, October? Mm -hmm. So yeah, people have got a few months to start. I know, that, I, know I said soon but um, obviously that will come very quickly, come around very quickly that time. And yeah, when you start entering competitions, just make sure that um, obviously you read all of the rules and you know how the competition's going to use your photographs as well, because there are some competitions out there that you know, you basically allow them to do anything and everything with your photographs. So that's always something really important to consider and then when you want to start entering bigger competitions I love WPPI and SWPP the judging system is um, incredible the way that the judges are trained and um, obviously the caliber of judges that they get there you know you've got some of the best photographers in the world judging and uh, giving giving hours and hours of expertise. And it is probably the best classroom you can ever have from an image creation standpoint um, when you listen to the feedback and what you know judges see. Can you clarify about RISE? Um, there's a, just a question here. Oh, RISE is going again this year. Um, not sure where I got it from, but I thought it was cancelled. No, no, no. Oh, no, definitely not cancelled. Um, it's just we put it off whilst, um, you know, we're going through a bit of a, a tough time around the world. And we just wanted to, you know, give people that little bit of extra time to start thinking about the, the entries that they, they want to submit. But yeah, no, we just um, postponed it, that's all. 
which was a hard decision, but also it's a very big job to run something like that. So, um, and it's just at the moment, Rob Garrett and myself in the studio and Michelle working from home. Uh, and we have, um, yeah, a lot of, we're doing obviously this every day. So trying to, to come up with new and exciting things to share in the group to keep everyone focused on their business, motivated, inspired. Okay, here's a, here's a tricky question. Without having a lot of detail, it is a little bit hard, but whilst editing, I needed to merge two images, so I placed them both in a new PSD. Now they're blurry and a bit sharp. Could it be a resizing problem? Oh, it could be. Are you changing the photograph mm. a lot when you are putting it? Could be the it? resolution of the new PSD that you've yeah. created. Um, if, if that's a, a higher resolution and you're placing a, a smaller resolution image into it, that could create blur when you go to resize it. Yeah, without knowing exactly what what you are um, working with there in terms of the size of the file, it's a little hard to say. But yeah, just check, you know, go to the, the PSD that you, you know, your main PSD and um, go up to uh, image, image size, canvas size and have a look at the size of that file and, and have a look at the resolution of it and you'll soon see whether or not you, um, you're changing it that way. Sorry, I'm just thinking about here. I'm trying to follow my lines. This hot glue gun is a little messy. <laughs> it's a brand new one too. Anyway. I'm gonna cut this piece because I want it to be a little shorter. Deborah's husband sounds like he's starting to get suspicious of who she's continuously hanging out with online. <laughs> <laughs> it, could, you know, it could be a worry, <laughs> tell you. So I'm not. I am concentrating. I'm sorry. I'm not oh, chatting. The shape, the shape is really starting to come Too together much. beautifully. The um, you'll be able to see that on the aerial shot there, Kelly. How it looks from direct above. Oh yeah, look at that. It's really starting to come together. Just want to cut this piece because I don't want it too long there. Yeah, quilling is quite the art. It's actually really fascinating once you start learning more about it. Some ridiculously, ow, that's hot. Clever people. And there's some amazing techniques that they use. So they, they get right into it. I could, I could see it turning into a fad that was bigger than scrapbooking. Oh, good morning, Danielle. All right. What else did I have to tell everyone? Oh, yeah, next week. Next week's a special week for me. Oh, it is. I, um, it's my birthday next week. You're not getting a facelift? No. That was just the website, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. I, um, I thought we'd celebrate and do a sale for the entire birthday week. <laughs> Everyone loves a sale. I don't like talking about stuff like that, you know. I offer products, I don't, you know, don't like, I'm not a big salesperson, but I thought being my birthday, 
we can celebrate that birthday week that means you have to buy me a present every day Robert Brown oh my god I love this oh, Shay is loving the new website thank you and Mandy just wanted to thank um, you and the rest of the team for doing these lives. It's giving lots of structure while everyone's in lockdown and keeping people motivated and sane. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. No, we, um, we understand how hard it is for business owners right now. Um, you know, when your livelihood stops, your income stops, and you can't shoot your clients, there is still always something else to photograph out there. And there is always something else to, you know, that you could be working on. So we, um, we didn't want people to, to feel too disheartened. Um, Shay's trying to get into stepping into the world of fine art editing. And so she's struggling a bit there to find the balance between fine art and over edit. Yeah, it is a bit of a tricky mm. one. And the thing is, like, I mean, fine art, there's always going to be that discussion around fine art and what is it and is it a thing and, and so forth. But you know what, it's, it's a style, I suppose, of editing and it's... Some people obviously have a very, um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for when it comes to their style of editing, you know, a very unique way of editing and it does have a little bit more of a painterly effect. But I suppose it's not all, when you think about a beautiful fine art portrait, it's not all about the editing. A lot of it will come down to how you light the image and, and style it, how you pose the subject. And then with the editing, you really shouldn't have to do too much. But when you think about the painterly effect, you know, bringing out the highlights and, and really working with those shadows is what basically, you know, I do. And um, good job, This Kelly. is a good question. Nothing is ever off topic here, by the way. <laughs> so, oh, well, maybe sometimes. I'll skip over those though. Um, but, um, so I'm going from offering digital gallery downloads to in-person sales as soon as it's safe to open. So basically when things get back to normal, in the middle of ordering my samples for my clients now, any tips on gently easing them into my returning clients into this transition? Um, it's going to have to increase the prices of my package greatly. Yeah, that's the thing. When so a new client is a new client, right? So if you are doing everything that we've been talking about um, in terms of your social media marketing and staying, you know, staying present and active, um, you know, new clients aren't going to know what your previous prices are. So when you start thinking about, you know, increasing your prices because of new products and creating new packages, that shouldn't be a problem. It's older clients that, re that return that may be the ones that kind of say, oh, I'll just have what I had last time. <laughs> you know, I'll just do that. Um, or might, you know, balk at coming to you. But the way I dealt with it in the past is always sharing with previous clients um, new products in a way that, you know, you are introducing something new and exciting to your business. So I would actually do like a product launch and share that brand new product. We've done in the past with these live videos, we've done a product um, shoot, we've done, we've talked about products and, and how and what to offer and how to offer them. We've done a lot of social media content um, conversations in previous videos. All of that information basically comes together in a way that you can share that and be excited about it. And for me, in the past, every time I have increased my pricing, because I, you know, I always go back and re revisit my, my current pricing and whether or not it's covering my cost of doing business and the salary that I'm paying myself, do I need a pay rise this year? Not really, I haven't done that much in terms of shooting my clients. I haven't earned it. Um, but the thing is, 
when I do that, I introduce a new product. So if they come and they say, oh, well, can we just have what we had last time? You can say, do you know what? I'm so sorry, I no longer offer that, that product. It, you, know, you could even say it was discontinued. Um, but the thing, the thing is, be excited. Share what it is that you offer and show them how much you love it and how excited you are to, to be able to you know, offer this to them. These, these end bits are hard to get that curl to stay while the, <laughs> while the glue is drying. But look at the shape of this. I didn't think it'd be so awkward getting around all the different pieces. <laughs> I'm not as flexible as I used to be. But yeah, um, when it comes to shooting this, this is something like I said before, you know, you could hang this on the wall. You could cut it out and, and hang it on the wall as a, as a piece. And people would love that. And you could get it down if you needed to, but it would get damaged. So I would, I'm, I'm already thinking I'm gonna make a digital out of this so I can come back and use it um, and offer it to my clients and shoot with it in mind. People love craft days. <laughs> so many people hanging around to watch all of this. Um, so we've got a few questions coming through here. I will start to get through them all for you. Okay. Topic. Okay. Yeah, what's your overall opinion on digital backgrounds? Like, what, what, yeah, well, what's your thoughts? <laughs> when would you use and when would you not? All that sort of stuff. Well, right? that's the thing. So digital backgrounds are a really great way to speed up your workflow during a session. And when you shoot for a digital background in mind, that's obviously going to make the process of using a digital background a lot easier. Mm -hmm. The thing is with digitals, um, if you don't shoot with them in mind and you just think, oh, you know, I'll be able to... to um, add that later on in post-production, it's not as easy as it sounds if you haven't shot specifically for it because you've got to consider, you know, your, um, the, the colour temperature, you've got to consider the aperture, you've got to consider the lighting, um, so many different things, the perspective, all, all of that stuff. So, um, but if you do shoot for them in mind, it can obviously speed up um, it can add a lot of variety to your galleries and speed up that workflow. Oh, I got the one curl on there now. <laughs> so yeah. Ooh, maybe you could do, so speaking of fine art, maybe you could do a DIY on like an extravagant collar or headpiece for a child. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, have an op shop dress that you've found, create some sort of headpiece. Ooh, I'm liking where that's going. Who's that from? That is from, yeah, I've got to scroll back through. And of course we can't see everyone's names on here, so I will find it though. That was Kelly. thank you. Yeah, I like the idea of that. I'd love to do a beautiful headpiece. Ah, here we go. Ah. Now, a question about, tried searching for Kelly's um, uh, playlist on Spotify, which he should discussed, um, but couldn't find it. Ooh. There is, um, if you actually search in the search bar on the group, um, Spotify, it should come up for you. Um, I've put a link to it a few times in, in the group. Um, it could be a little bit confusing to find, actually. I just thought about it because it's actually under my name. <laughs> it's not on Kelly's account. <laughs> we'll change that over at some point. <laughs> And what type of paper is this, Kelly? Um, this is just cardboard, just normal crafting sort of kids cardboard. And um, and then I just have printer paper as well. So 
you know, different types of paper that you've got available. Oh, wow, look at this. This is so, so much fun. Because it's so curled, it's a bit hard to get those ends to stick down there. All so, right. Jen, with the transition going from um, digital to in-person, um, she's scared poopless for the transition. Uh, but got to remember self-worth and work and the product and what, what's Absolutely. in it for the client. So. And remember, you're offering a product and service. And that's what it basically comes down to. So don't be afraid to share that excitement with new products and stuff with your clients. They're looking for something that's different and unique. Oh, I missed that bit there. Anyway. Yeah, so Jill's just started making her own digital backdrops. Um, with the props that are in her studio. It's made her sessions so much easier. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And that's what it basically comes down to, is just, you know, how can you streamline what it is that you do? How can you speed it up and improve the process and the client experience all at the same time? Ah, here we go. This is a good question. Who asked this? Smart person. Mandy, does your session cost include any product and, do, um, and does that cover the cost of your doing business? I was using the pricing, calcul using the pricing calculator the other day and need to figure this one out. So what's your session fee? So my session fee is just for my time that day. Um, my package, the, cost is, the costs of my package are what actually cover my cost of doing business and, you know, how to pay myself a salary. So I do charge a session fee at the time of the session and that just covers my time that day. It doesn't include any products or anything like that. Oh my gosh. Okay, Can you we've see got it? somebody else who wants you to do a headpiece as well. Yay. Let's do it. I'll zoom in a little. Let's have a look at this. This is looking so cool. I think this is going to take a lot longer than you thought, Kelly Brown. I know. I may end up just keep doing this off camera. I'll do a time lapse or something, maybe. And um, maybe come back live a bit later on when we're ready to shoot it. I don't know. Do people want to stay live and watch? Yeah, what do you want? I don't. I don't. What do you want, I don't peeps? mind. I just. I don't. I, I won't feel bad if you all leave me. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's loving it anyway. So Can if you, you see were to, that? <laughs> yeah. Who bad? If you were to do this sort of thing, um, when do you create, like if it's for, if you know that a client's coming in and you're doing something special, when do you do the actual creating? Is it the day before, the day of? Usually the week before, like the weekend before. So usually there's quite a bit of thought that goes into creating something like this. It wouldn't just be a spear of the moment thing. Um, it would be something that, you know, we've taken into consideration. It could have been part of a conversation that I'd had with um, a client and, and uh, you know, in terms of talking about what it is that we are going to create. So, again, that's something that, you know, you can work into your business practices and you could have in your pricing and information that you send out, you know, your more creative pieces, if that's what you want to offer and um, you know and encourage them to contact you to have a conversation around what you could potentially create for them but yeah i usually will spend you know a, a couple of weeks thinking about an idea or a concept or because you know if a, if a returning client's coming back and they know that this is the type of thing that i do or if um uh, um, I've talked to them about, you know, all the different options and they're all for it.
Apparently somebody else likes my other Spotify playlist called Singing in the Shower. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett does love his music. I do. Not everyone loves to listen to it when I want to. <laughs> we often put, put something on here. Yeah, as far as the um, stopping and coming back later, I'm, everyone's no. No, oh, okay. they're invested now. They've, they've put invested. in the time. Good job. Yeah, so if you are after that Spotify playlist, just search um, kellybrownnewbornposing.com, I'm pretty sure it is. I'll see if I can find it. I'll put it in the comments. How's your back going, Kelly? <laughs> okay, I'm going to go to the other side now. And we'll work over here now for a bit. Who said that? Mandy, <laughs> thank you for asking my questions. I'm watching in bed and keep on dropping my phone on my face. <laughs> I think I might have to see the end result in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, Mandy, I've been known to do that. When Garrett and I travel together, we often share a room, obviously not in the same bed, but <laughs> he is forever taking videos and photos of me while I'm sleeping or falling asleep <laughs> with my phone on my face. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, Greta asks, do your children have an interest in either photography or media? Um, one of my kids is very interested in, um, you know, art and craft and drawing and things like that. The other two, you know, they're not really interested. One loves having her photo taken. Being in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> She's always up for a shoot and that's my Georgie Brown. So I am going to photograph her very soon. We could, we're going to come up with a creative concept and I'm going to do that live. So the headpiece that I make in one live, we'll use that in a shoot with her um, here in the group, which she would absolutely love. And my other daughter, we've got another challenge set for a photo shoot with her. Um, she's right into anime. Uh, she loves all the characters, you know, loves drawing them. And we're going to photograph her styled as an anime character. So that's a nice challenge for me. Okay, so the maternity gown definitely has to happen, I think. Um, the requests keep on coming through for it and the headpiece as well. Nice. We do love a good headpiece. And there's some beautiful headpieces that you can find. Actually, I'm going to make a headpiece out of fake hair. So I, a lot of, a lot of people don't know this, but I actually have a background in hairdressing. So when I was 16, I, um, I left school. I had a job on the weekends at a salon and I would, um, I would, you know, sweep the floor, make tea and coffee, all of that kind of stuff. And anyway, they ended up offering me an apprenticeship, which I, I took and I ended up doing my, my apprenticeship for three and a half years. So I do love working with hair. I'm going to have to bend this bit back here, I think. Oh, somebody uses your playlist to send their own kids to sleep. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thanks for putting it together. No worries. Yeah. That playlist is such a, a great way to relax your clients during a shoot. If you haven't already, there is a video that Kelly has done, if you haven't watched it already, 
um, how to calm the farm of any parent. And it talks about the whole setting the perfect environment and creating a, a nice atmosphere and, and setting the expectations for them early on and all that sort of stuff. So do yourself a favour and watch that. But not now. Later. <laughs> And if you are after all the um, previous videos, I did create a document. And the document contains each video um, that Kelly has done over the past five weeks. Yes, that's right, five weeks of video content, um, all on the one document. So you can basically go in there and play the videos. If you are viewing it on your mobile device, you will find a couple of the videos only have a link there. The video won't actually play on the document, so you'll just need to click the link. But you can find that in the file section on the uh, left-hand side if you're on a Mac or up the top in the menu. It's very, very handy. Okay, we're getting there. Ah, how do you deal with copyrighted themes that clients ask for, like Disney? Uh, do you know, if they're bringing with them um, the outfits and things like that, you can photograph their baby in an outfit that they bring with you, with them, sorry, to the studio. And you know what, if it's not a part of your branding, if it's not a part of your normal style, things like that, you're not going to share it, obviously. But if you do, um, just make sure that you let people know that this is, was something that your clients brought with them. And... Um, and yeah, but yeah, when it comes to, obviously, you know, using different things to, I suppose, get gain from um, financially. If you buy costumes and, you know, and, and are photographing people in them and things like that um, to sell, I suppose, or sell digital backgrounds that are themed on different characters, uh, that could be a very big problem for you. I think we all saw that, that um, what was it, that um, issue with the Grinch? Yeah, I'm already visualising what I'm going to do in um, in post production with with this. But yeah, if any if we dropped off, people gone. No, 74. Oh my gosh, people. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not an expert at this, that's for sure. I'm not very... It's, I mean, I'm having a go at it, it's, I'm not. <laughs> I think that's part of your creativity though, is that you don't have to be an expert at something, but just as long as you're inspired by the technique or, or what it is that they're doing, and you end up creating your own anyway, like it's not a... Um, yeah, making it your own. You're not own. copying anyone, you're doing, you're doing your own thing, so. I think that's what I love the most about crafting is that, you know, as much as you try to obviously, you know, make something as good as what you've seen someone else do, um, making it your own is always the best advice. So Casey asks, um, where's it gone, where's it gone? Are you going to paint it, colour change it in post-production? black and white, what's your end um, visualisation yeah, for it? I think I'm going to go, I'm going to shoot it colour, that's my visual, um, and I think I, I mean gr this particular backdrop is going to be quite easy to do any colour changing with, um, 
But yeah, I think I'm going to keep it like this. I'm a very greyish type of person um, <laughs> when it comes to colours and things like that. But I think when you start adding different tones um, to things like this, you know, they could overpower the baby. Whereas if I keep it quite monotone, um, then the um, you know the baby's going to really stand out if I keep it colour as well. Now the paper is the the cheap paper is um, it um, isn't the best colour. It's a lot cooler than than the cardboard paper. So obviously in post I'm going to change the colour of that. I've got a question here. I think most of us are super scared about this as soon as we reopen. Um, we'll have all our delayed newborns. So um, maybe you could do a live about shooting two or three month olds. It, yes, absolutely. Do a whole keynote presentation on that. Of course, we can't have any kids in here, but. No, but um, do you know what? When. So in Australia, compared to other countries, our restrictions aren't as great as some, you know, and especially in Queensland, this, the restrictions aren't as great here as what they, they are in, say, New South Wales and Melbourne in terms of reported cases and things like that. So as soon as the restrictions are lifted and we can start working with clients, obviously taking as many safety precautions as we possibly can, um, I will get some older babies in here and I'll do some videos and, and lives with how to photograph them. But the thing is, I was doing a workshop recently and I had a five week old baby in, in as a model um, because I was really struggling to get models actually. And this five week old baby slept better and posed better than a five day old baby that I had in there. <laughs> and it was really quite amazing. So as long as you are calm, as long as you keep that baby, um, you know, content and happy, you will be fine. But yeah, I will definitely go through some of that. But the, yeah, it, it is scary not knowing, you know, how long it's going to be before we are open for business again. And then obviously, that's why I've been talking so much about that sharing social media content every day and staying present and just keeping your clients, um, potential clients, up to date with what's happening in your studio, how you are going to start operating once your, you know, your doors are open again. And um, yeah, giving them as much information as you possibly can. Uh, so who's this, who's this, who's this? find this. Uh, Deborah says, oh great, so I'm going to prison, invested in backdrops and outfits for clients um, for their sessions of Frozen. I did buy the licensed dresses and shoes, um, well except the gorgeous one that I got from the Ukraine. Um, so yeah, it's, it's about the branding and that sort of thing. So you do have to be careful about Do you know um, what, Deborah? That's actually going to be a really good question for our conversation with um, Deb yes. when she comes in as our special guest on Monday. Um, you know, being a lawyer, she will be able to answer a lot of those questions. So please make sure that you ask that when we do that live because I think it's a really unknown grey area for a lot of people. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Sorry, slightly pleased with myself. How did you roll the paper? Um, so I used a pencil and I just sat and, and rolled it. Um, Robert and I rolled it last night. It was a little bit of fun. I had my husband crafting. <laughs> Not always a good thing, I'm sure. <laughs> I think he enjoyed it. You think? I think he did. Does it matter? He said, I've done this before. <laughs> he was very good at it. Very quick. Ow!
I think I might run out of things. Paper? Yeah, I probably should start placing them. Do you want me to roll them. some stuff? Well, no, I'm just going to start placing them where I'm going to use them. So just to make sure I don't overdo it and then run out over yeah, there. True. Yep. <laughs> Good thinking. Okay, there's quite a lengthy question here. There you go. Fire away. Okay, Midori. Um, would you mind telling us roughly what your package prices are? I know you keep on telling us to figure it out according to <laughs> our cost of doing business and so on. Um, right now, I'm on my way to make branding and repricing my sessions. Branding is the key in my mind in the past few years. And a big thank you. Hope you realise um, I have what are the best sides of the business. No, so how did, what, what, are your, what are your thoughts on, you know, sharing pricing and that sort of thing? Because it is so well, unique. Well, that's it's, the thing. So no if I tell you, this, I taught a workshop a long time ago and probably eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I shared with the group my current pricing and packages and um, <laughs> about a month later, no, it was probably about four months later to be honest, um, this particular photographer contacted me and she said, I tried your pricing, it doesn't work. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> and, um, and I was like, well, of course it's not going to work for you. They're products that I have found and my lowest, cheapest package is the cost of that is determined based on my cost of doing business for an entire year, based on what I pay myself as a salary for an entire year, add those two together, divide that by the number of sessions that you know you can physically do or want to do that year, then you've got the amount that you need to charge for your cheapest package. Every other package that goes up in price from there, that's a bonus. You know, so as long as your cheapest package covers your cost of doing business and your um, salary that you're paying yourself, then that's all that matters. I can't tell you what the cost of my packages are because my cost of doing business is going to be very different to someone who works from a home studio. I have staff, I own the building, so I pay a mortgage on that, that's in my cost of doing business. So it's all very relative where you start out with your cost of doing business as well. And you've got um, high-end clients as well. So that's another thing. They're willing to pay your prices. That's it. You know, if, if your, you know, demographics in your particular area aren't um, a higher-end customer. So there's so many things that, um, that come into play. But it is a great conversation to have. Oh, and I do love talking about it, so don't get me wrong, like, I, I want to, people to do it. The thing is, when you determine how many sessions that you are physically going to do a year, um, and then you obviously stick to it. I might put one more in there. Oh, look, I'm not going to run out. <laughs> yeah, it's looking so good. That aerial shot's amazing. Yay. Your crafting's good too, but my aerial shot's better, you know. I can't think of anywhere else that I want to put one. Maybe here, in terms of balance, but this is another really cool thing that I'm going to do. I'm just going to place some of these in these areas. so neat and so I'm guessing in post you'll be able to like reshape these to make them not so um, formed in their shape give what, a bit which? more of the, the hearts oh no like, I, I like them kind of um, you don't like them make them make them you know like you're drawing how the ends were wispy and that sort of thing like maybe yeah. you go for that sort of look okay maybe yeah I like maybe. that concept <laughs> 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 I haven't got there yet, she says. Let bear me craft, with, damn it. Bear with me. Here we go. 
Now, I like this one. You're going to talk about this for a while. Really? Was there ever a point where you wanted to give up? Oh, God, yeah. But I, I, I wanted to give up because, oh, my God, look at that. I wanted to give up because I, I was I was basically getting very burnt out and I um, and it was because I wasn't charging enough money I was cheap and so therefore I was busy because I was my work was good and people were booking me but I wasn't charging enough and so I was just I was basically just working myself into the ground. And that was that was really hard, but you know what? Uh, when I when I actually stopped worrying about what everyone else was doing because I was continually comparing my work saying, "Oh, it's not good enough or they're busier than me or they're earning more money than I am or, you know, all of those things." I was not giving myself credit for I suppose the business that I was you know, I had created and I was spending way too long doing a lot of different areas in my business and not seeing the rewards. I spent three years, I think, telling my children that I was almost done and it wasn't fair on them. Um, it wasn't fair on my husband. I was so consumed with my business that I actually started to to resent it and um, and I was having problems with clients because I wasn't servicing them the way that I knew that I should have been but it basically came down to do you know what I need to start treating my business like a business and paying myself accordingly and then focusing on my clients instead of everyone else in the industry and worrying about what they were all doing. So this is not taking as long as... Well, it's coming together quite nicely now. Gosh, it looks great. That is so cool. But yeah, I'm going to shoot this. I've got my camera here. I've got um, my fake baby. Actually, can you go grab that for me, Kins? It's upstairs. My One of my daughters has come down. She's watching excitedly behind the camera there. Casey asks, if your client comes in with choppy nail polish, would you <laughs> fix it in post or leave it because they're unprepared? Um, <laughs> I have fixed nail polish in post um, because, yeah, it doesn't look great. But you know what? Parents, when they come in for their newborn sessions, you've got to give them, you know, uh, cut them a bit of slack, really. They, they probably haven't slept much in the last few days. They probably haven't eaten properly, they're tired, they haven't taken their eyes off that baby, and it's like they're probably second guessing everything that they do. And I think the last thing on their mind is painting their nails. So it takes, takes me a couple of seconds to fix nail polish in, in post-production. So. Yeah. I wouldn't worry too much about that. You I know? kind of read into that like, you know, is it their problem or is it my problem? Yeah, you've got to be sometimes a little bit considerate, you know, when, when you're working with people who have just had a baby. They, um, you know, they're going through massive changes, especially if it's their first baby. Greta's most concerned that you're not going to be able to move tomorrow. I I'm probably won't. <laughs> I'm turn 43 next week. And um, I can tell you, playing a lot of sport as when I was younger has definitely <laughs> crept up in the last few years. <laughs> oh, I just love it. Oh, that. that's gorgeous. 
Anyway, sorry, I get a little excited when I You're start to see things okay. come, come to life. Thanks, Kins. Can you undress that baby for me? I haven't burnt myself too many times. Like, I haven't taken skin off like yeah. I normally do. I haven't bleeped anything yet, so you've done well. It's a lot of hot glue. I hope this is inspiring people to get creative themselves and not just, you know, watch it and feel good about it and that sort of thing. Actually, get out there and do it. Yeah, and right. you don't have to copy, you make your own. Give like, yourself permission. Yeah, do something fun. I do love seeing everyone make, you know, different things in the group. We've seen a lot of art and craft. Ah, Cassie's got a good question. Do you offer your clients food or beverage or is it liability due to allergies and that sort of thing? Yeah, I'm not I'm not a cafe, that's Hot for drinks? sure. No. No. I tell them to bring with them um, a drink bottle um, and a snack in case they get hungry because I know that breastfeeding mums do get hungry. So that's in my what to expect information that I, I send to them. I'll, I'll say, you know, bring, bring a drink bottle and um, the studio is nice and warm. Bring a drink bottle and a snack in case you get hungry. And yeah, just give them lots of information like that. How, how they can best prepare for the experience. Getting there. Do you use flower bonnets for sitters? No, it's a, I, they are very cute, but I think that's more of a, you know, personal preference. You've got lots of nice little outfits though for, for your sitters, like yeah. to make all the frills and that sort of thing, but. If a client brought one with them, you know, I definitely use it. It's not really your style, is it? No. Nah. Your response to the food and beverages. I'm not a cafe. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Denny Fisher. Hi, Dan. <laughs> uh, Denny Fisher and I used to work in hospitality together, so I know she's getting a kick out of that. <laughs> now I'm being paid to photograph. I know some people like to, but do you know, I have actually photographed some people with big allergies and I remember having to go to a client's home because their little girl was pretty much allergic to anything and everything and um, and before I went there I wasn't allowed to have eaten you know nuts or anything like that and I had to wash my hands and take my shoes off the minute I walked into their home it was quite um, quite the experience but yeah I understood their level of concern obviously and then one of my friends um, has two little girls, well, they're not little anymore, but had two little girls with quite big allergies. And so, you've, yeah, I, I get people's um, fears and concerns, but... Um, oh, that's really hot. If you do have any more questions, I will be back shortly. I'm just going to set Kelly's camera up um, so we can maybe tether to it and get a shot of this later. No, I'm good, thanks. I think I'm just going to use what I've got here.
It's very sticky. All right, sorry, I went a little quiet there. I just got a little bit lost in myself. <laughs> I did offer to come back later. <laughs> this can be quite the boring process. Um, I've got a, one, of our, one of our very VIP customers here, Rob Brown. Um, hi, Kelly Brown, I have a question for you. Would you put images of family members in the smaller hearts. Ooh. Oh, now your creative brain is going to hurt my creative brain, <laughs> Mr. Brown. <laughs> He's a VIP, you have to answer this question. <laughs> well, do you know what? You totally could. I kind of think that that might be a bit much. You could totally try if you wanted to. Mackenzie's standing off to the side here. Yes, you have to do that. <laughs> that could be fun, I suppose. Like father, like daughter. Yeah. Uh, that could be fun. I didn't ever think of doing that, but you know what? I could visualise it. <laughs> All right, how's it looking from above now? It's getting there. Oh, Michelle's, Michelle's very impressed with um, Rob's comment. She says, I thought he was going to ask you what you think he should make himself for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is cutting into Rob's lunchtime. <laughs> we do have a lot of fun here in the studio, especially around lunchtime. And try to not to encourage each other to eat bad food. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle's just recommending that Rob should just order in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Casey's suggested you could even use different images from the newborn shoot, like different poses yeah. and that sort of thing Here in the house. There you go, you started something, Rob. I like that. It's a bit more like it. Ow. Okay. I will. It's alright, I'm gonna get some glue. Now you want me to take a picture? Yes, please. Just wanna see if this works. I'm not sure if it's going to. Thank you. Oh my goodness. There's the photo that Kelly just took. It's on an angle, it's not from <laughs> it's above. A, and it's not probably uh, exposed correctly. But it's a, it's a, I suppose it's, um, it's a kind of clearer shot. We're getting quite a dark moody sort of feel here because we're using um, the ceiling Using lights. The, the <laughs> ceiling lights, but um, that was really cool. Thank you. The tether is working. Fantastic. Now keep in mind as you're looking at this, it's huge. It's 
1.5 meters across. So yeah. It's going to require a fair bit of height on Kelly's part to, um, to get all this in shot. Yeah, that's and that was another thing that I was thinking about in terms of safety. Um, I wouldn't want to put a baby in there and, um, you know, risk standing on something above the baby just to get my shot. It just does not want to stay there. All right. Oh yes, Michelle has brought up a very important topic. Um, there have been a couple of emails through that people can't see the new site. It still says that it's in maintenance. You do have to do a proper clear of your cache um, or cache, depending on where you're from in the world. But your history and cache does need to be cleared. Um, basically what it is, it's just your computer storing information from what it's previously seen. So um, you will when you get there and you do see this site, it is beautiful. It's taken well over 12 months of development. A lot of time, money and effort's been put into it just to make sure that the experience for you is so much better. And all you have to do is look at the comments that have been coming through in the group to know that it's, um, it's definitely something special. Oh, it's nice to stand, let me tell you. Oh, so the question here, um, what, uh, from Casey, what length would you shoot this at and how high would you have Good to get? Good question. You're going to find out. So Kelly's going to shoot this. I normally mm -hmm. shoot with a 24 to 70, pretty much, you know, my go-to lens go -to for lens everything. Never leaves your camera. And, Until um, today. Yeah, today I'm not obviously going to be able to, to shoot with that because it's not going to give me a wide enough angle to get everything in. I will have to stand on something to get it all in. Um, but I'm actually going to shoot this with a... Is it a 16 to 35? 16 to yeah. 35. Um, it is a beautiful lens. Um, it's a Canon lens and the great thing with it, most of the time when you go that wide, you get quite a bit of distortion. But this one was built for commercial photographers and they've managed, I don't know how, with round glass to make things very straight so you don't get as much distortion with this. Have you guys seen one. seen the new R5, Canon R5 camera? It is a beast. It is coming. It's being released very, very soon. I am so excited about it. Um, I've been holding off from getting a new camera. Um, for a while. I'm still shooting with the 5DS which I bought after my 5D Mark III before the 5D Mark IV was released and um, it's a beautiful camera, my 5DS. And I do have the 5D Mark IV but it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with my 5DS but I am very excited to see this new camera. Oh, Maria's got a great idea, Kelly. Yes. It's a great idea, and I think you should do it because we're beautiful people that work here. In the small hearts, you should put photos of everyone that works in the studio with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I could do that. Yeah, you can use my maternity image. <laughs> when I was pregnant that time, remember? Oh my gosh.
Yeah, when you're working on creative concepts, ideas and things like that, create a vision board. I can't tell you how how valuable they are and just to add to it. I like to print my stuff off and stick it up on a wall so that I'm always looking at it. You know, if I'm having a sip of my cup of tea, I'm, I might look up at it and go, ooh, you know, I really love that because I probably create about four different pieces like this a year. Um, I try to, to keep myself, you know, sort of busy and, and creative. So I break it out into months. There's, you know, um, three months sort of sections and give myself that much time when I work on my award stuff. So create a vision board and just add to it all the time. Pinterest is always also a great place to obviously be working on things like that. And um, I'll just bring up and show everyone again where you got your inspiration from and the different things that you were looking at. So there's there's one of them there. And this is side by side now. So right at the very beginning we didn't we didn't show it like this, but so you can you can really see that nothing's copied. Nothing's the same. It's just a little bit of something from Kelly's everywhere. own interpretation of each one of these different um, setups. And here's another one. And then of course bringing it all together within the circle is that one there. So again the tree, that circular shape. Oops. Oh, days. Top camera just had a little fuzzy. <laughs> We're almost done. It's getting there. Oh, that's really hot. How many people we still got? Are you dropped off? Uh, we are at 59. Yeah, I knew people would go and then come <laughs> back. I think because, uh, what is it, UK, it's like after midnight. So we usually, usually have a few um, night hours at the beginning of the um, live and then they drop off over time, so. Understandable. So yeah, things like this might not be everyone's cup of tea and you might have your, you might be in coming up with your own concept and idea right now, which is very cool. That's what we, we love to hear and see. And it doesn't have to be a tree of life, but you could create something completely different. Oh, you were talking about the cameras before, and um, we've just got somebody here who said that they um, uh, tried the mirrorless and would definitely suggest before buying any camera that you rent one for a couple of days just so you can get used to it before you actually um, commit. Very, very, very good. good point. Yes. Because I got the new mirrorless camera as well, the Canon, and I did not like it. <laughs> it was very different for me. And it was just a personal preference, but um, yeah, it was not, oh, it, I just couldn't get used to the, the way that it worked. But the, the new one, the body of it is so similar to how I currently use my camera, the shape of the body, the buttons and, and everything. So this, as a mirrorless camera, is going to be absolutely incredible. But yeah, I didn't like the way that it felt the, the size of the body for me was too small and it just felt really awkward. So this is more a question I suppose about you as the, the teacher, the photographer, the studio owner, the business person, the lecturer, you know, with all of your different hats. Casey asks, do you find yourself shooting more, teaching more, traveling more? What's your... 
Do you know, it, that's, a, that's pretty cool to talk about because yeah. I, you um, you know, I love shooting in the studio with my clients and I went through, you know, a lot of years just being a photographer and, and then when I started teaching, I also loved that, but I loved meeting photographers and learning about their experiences. I love listening and trying to help them with their challenges and things like that. But yeah, the travel side as well. Like, I mean, I have traveled to over 30 different countries. Like I still can't quite fathom that. And there's not a day that goes by that I'm not grateful for all of the experiences that photography's given me. And, and I think that's, you know, I, I don't teach because, and, I, and this is the thing, there are a lot of people out there that educate and, and they do it for different reasons. And, you know, that's fine, that's them, that's their business. But for me, I don't do it for money, I do it because I want to see our industry survive and get stronger um, with skills and seeing photographers really succeed in their business, whatever, you know, their goals are and everyone's going to have different goals. So basically, you know, it's, it's now become that balance for me, like, um, obviously I've got three kids, being away from them is always hard. I, I struggle when I don't get to spend time with them all the time and I, um, I miss out, I've missed out on so much. So there's always going to be a sacrifice in some sense to, to what it is that you, you do and you know I'm just lucky because I do have a husband that works in the business with me and and he doesn't work away, he doesn't, um, you know, have to work ridiculously long hours. He's home with the kids, so we, when I'm away, and, and that's the beautiful thing about it. We have, a, um, you know, the ability to be able to, to have that. Oh, I've just messed that bit there up. Oh, uh, throw it in the bin, the whole lot. <laughs> Mess it up. It'll recover. It's paper. Um, Juliana, obviously a very sensible, sensible lady. Um, <laughs> could you have scaled this down possibly and used smaller hearts to make the paper? So yes. Because it's going to be a digital, isn't it? You could have totally done that, but I had made the love heart in the middle already. <laughs> it was your set of scale, yeah. Yeah, and. Um, <laughs> And so when I thought about how big I was going to make this, I actually will put a baby in here and shoot it safely with my 16 to 35. Yep. So I am going to um, store this in a way, I'm going to cut, cut this piece of paper off and I'm going to hang it on the wall, which is going to be really cool. And the way, the paper's not heavy. So when I attach all these different pieces and I have them on the wall, it's going to look really cool. And um, I will get a baby in here and I will shoot it because, you know, there's a lot of work that's gone into it. <laughs> and when I'm working on my award images, um, I enter WPPI every year and the category there is single capture. So I wanted to make something that I could put a baby in and obviously one day use, which is really cool. But I have this goal. I've only told a couple of people. Oh, now you're just telling a couple more. 70. And, and, and I'll tell a few more. <laughs> um, but I, um, I did my fellowship panel at SWPP, not this year, just uh, in 2019, in January 2019, I submitted a panel for my fellowship, which not many people have achieved. It's probably one of the highest honors in terms of um, you know being awarded in photography and I, I submitted the panel um, with motherhood as my theme so you submit 20 images and all 20 images have to work together and complement each other they have to um, be similar in their color 
color balance and their their stylings and, and all of that kind of stuff. So you're basically being judged for your your fellowship um, based on a gallery of 20 photographs, not just one photograph. But so much goes into um, that fellowship panel in terms of the way that you present each image, um, how uh, the way that they're cropped and and oh, Garrett, you were there with me. And, no, I was. And it was each each print had to be put hung, matted, and put on a wall. And a panel of five judges then reviews the entire panel and they assess it based on its, you know, the styling, the shoots, uh, sorry, the, um, the, the quality of the photographs in terms of technical excellence, um, whether or not the colors and the placement of each image works within the panel. You've got 10 images at the top and 10 images below. Each matted print has to be X amount of inches away from the other other images and it like there's just so much to consider so i submitted my fellowship panel i was very very lucky i i received my fellowship and i was talking to um terry who organizes all of that and she was telling me how no one has ever received their fellowship for a newborn panel, an entire newborn panel. I did have some newborns in mind, but it was more about mothers. There was a mother in every single one. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> I found the fellowship video. Ah. I'm going to work out a way to put this <laughs> Me, what are you doing? I think I'm almost done too. Oh, awesome. So I'm just going to put three more in here. Have a look at where I need to put some more bits and pieces. Fill some holes. So while Kelly's doing some fluffing there, what I'll do is put Kelly on the small screen and put this video on the big screen. Here we go. Mackenzie Brown, yes. could you push play on the computer for me? And so this is without the audio or anything, but this is kind of the process that Kelly went through, through that fellowship. It was amazing to see, um, it, I suppose, the detail that you have to go into. So as a photography, you're behind the, you're behind the lens and you're behind the camera and you, you, you're taking your photos, but this is about presentation. It's about, you know, making sure that you've curated your images side by side and that they all work well together. and. So you can see it's all very official. Um, there's a whole panel of people sitting there at the front, very important, amazing, amazing photographers. And the whole process choked me up. I don't know how Kelly felt, but, um, oh, well, yeah, I do, because I've videoed her. Um, <laughs> but this is the, this is, this is, you know, what they, what they do. So it's really, really cool. Are we back? It's still going through the process of the um, the time lapse of them going backwards and forwards. So they pull the images off the wall and they want to look at them closer underneath the um, proper professional lights. And this is them all standing up, um, so you can't actually see what what their what their opinions are. Um, and this is, <laughs> this is Kelly being dragged up to find out her um, her results, and a big round of applause happened. It was it was amazing. A lot of love in the room that day. Yes, it was so exciting. Um, but that was such a cool thing to do. It was you know I wasn't being rewarded on one photograph. It was a a panel of 20 and so I have this idea where I am going to create a series of photographs 20 of newborns with sculptures and, and art that I've created yes. so I um, that's my that's my goal and that's something that I think is really important to share with everyone is that you know you've got to set yourself challenges and go for them like and plan it so that's not something that I'm going to do 
um, you know, like tomorrow, it's something that I'm going to build and work on over a period of time. Um, I will work on that, that panel, um, you know, for the next eight months, um, maybe longer, and, and create it and get it to a point where, you know, I'm, I'm proud of it. So it'll be, yeah, it'll be pretty cool. Okay, I'm almost done. Oh, Mark Rosetto's in the group. So he was there for the um, for the oh. panel. So it was brilliant. See all the images in a showcase. It was crazy awesome. Yeah, I think you know you like I was saying. You've got to set yourself some really cool challenges and work towards it. And your clients love hearing about things like that as well. A lot of people say, oh, my clients don't care if I win awards and all that kind of stuff. Well, do you know what? I beg to differ. <laughs> when people walk in my studio, the first thing they see at the entrance, you know, are, are my awards. And they always go, wow. And I love it because kids love shiny things. So kids always go up to it. And then their parents stand there and talk about, you know, awards and things like that with their kids. So for me, it's it's created a lot of impact but what it's also done for my business is it's given my clients a lot of confidence in my abilities because I've pushed myself and I have been rewarded for my hard work and they do love that. <laughs> is that Rebecca Law, the rack of trophies is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just having a little look here at what I can do differently to add to this. So I've just put that aerial shot back up there, if that helps you at all, Kelly, for a reference. Yeah, thank you. I should be able to just place some of these pieces of paper here to add to this. Beautiful comment, Danielle Fisher. You like a bottle, a good bottle of red Kelly Brown. You just <laughs> keep improving with age and knowledge. Oh, I love you, you Dan. Have a gift. You are a beautiful human being. Who lives too far away? I know. All right. This is looking so good. I'm just cutting a few little bits of pieces of paper here to kind of help with my trunk. I might need the hot glue gun. But I think I'm, I'm kind of done. There's a few little bits and pieces, pieces, um, not pieces, there's a few little areas over there that I could, mm -hmm. I could fill. As far as the single capture rules go, say if you missed an element or something, you ran out of curls, could you use the curls from that shot? Um, you can't Somewhere. clone or um, do things like that. You have to read the rules. You, um, you can't copy any elements or mirror um, areas within a frame. So they are quite strict. They always ask for the raw file of single capture categories. 
so that they can see how much you have obviously altered the original file. It's that whole vetting process that they go through, I suppose, that to make sure everyone's abiding by all the rules. And I did love one year, though, when they asked you for the raw file and you had to send them an iPhone photo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was raw. <laughs> All right. So yeah, the shot that I'm going to take now, it's not going to be my finished shot because um, obviously I'm going to sit down and I'm going to get rid of all the spider webs from the hot glue gun and try to um, remove a lot of, you know, the little bits and pieces of, um, you know, just sort of there's a bit of plaster that's come off here and there. I might sort of change the the position of some of the the hearts and things like that. But um, yeah, I uh, I'm pretty happy with how it's come out. Turned out. Alrighty, we take a photo. I'll go on. <laughs> when you look at it side on, it looks like a heap of toilet rolls. <laughs> Actually, it does from this view that we're looking at right now. Yes, and, um, you're correct. <laughs> and I haven't, um, I haven't lit it. So there's, there's some ceiling lights on. Can you switch those lights off there, Ken's? And we'll leave, there's a little bit of natural light coming through over here and there's a light there. But I wanna, um, I wanna see if I can capture, capture it here to give you an idea of how I will photograph it when I, Okay, <laughs> this is gonna be fun. I can't shoot. I can't shoot live view, can I? Oh uh, yeah, can? I'm pretty sure you can. On tether. Oh yep. Give Here it we a go. Whirl. I think. Um, I think it'll work. So obviously, if I shot it from down from back here. Oh wow! <laughs> I can see it on the screen. <laughs> if I shot it from okay. back here, that's obviously not going to give me the the best perspective. So I need to get over um, above. Oh, that's the whole studio. Oh, hi. <laughs> Sorry. Here's me sitting on my little stool, the iPad in front of me. <laughs> oh, sorry, I keep pointing it at you. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the... There we go. Oh, wow. So you can even use the screen there, Kelly, as your am, reference. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I'm not looking at the exposure just yet. <laughs> okay. So. Wow, that's amazing. Oh my God, it's hard to, to get your hands all the way out. I think we need to get your highest tool. <laughs> <laughs> We do have that um, wow. little step ladder upstairs. Can so you bring this shut up? Let's see Okay, I think when you went into live, you were kind of changed out. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. What a workout, people. Well, that is pretty, pretty cool, creating something like that. Now, we've been going for just over two hours, so I've, um, I've definitely earned a break. <laughs> Thank, I actually thought that this would be a really quick, um, a really quick, video <laughs> uh -huh.
But yeah, the uh, the hot gluing was not fast. I'm, I apologise. But yeah, this was so much fun and a challenge. Like I said, it really pushed me to think outside. Obviously, you know my comfort zone and create something with items that I had access to and that's something that we have to remember when we are um, you know making different things for the studio and for our clients you know allocating a budget how is the baby going to go into something like this how are you going to um, create it in a way that is safe how are you going to use the different elements to make the baby the main subject um, if I was going to put a baby in here uh, we'll just put some of this in here just for the and the baby Trying to make her a little more respectable there. Cover her bits. But yeah, that's kind of how I'd think about popping a, a baby in here and using that shape. Look at that. Let's go to that one. Now I've got the images up. So that looks so cool. So I've just opened up um, the three images that Kelly took in, um, I've opened them up in Camera Raw. So the, it's the first screen that opened up that I could see the images. So there's the one of the shots and then let's go to the next shot and the next shot. Yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to be really careful when I am getting the exposure right for this because there's so much white. Mm. And this is another thing when you start to think about the the end result and the photograph, you know, that white heart is really standing out there in, in the centre of this. Um, so I'll, I'll think about how I'm going to light the baby and then obviously the shape of it as well. And I'll use, I'll most likely use a reflector to... Um, to sort of you know bring some light back into those areas but it is the sort of shadows from all of the different curls that are going to give it that depth so yeah i'm done okay is it, <laughs> is it the weekend yet You're exhausted there's still one more day what's happening tomorrow kelly Brown? live critique 4 p.m this afternoon i'm going to share a um, link in the group 4 p.m australian eastern standard time it's now 12:47. Um, so in three hours, I'm going to share a link to for you to upload your photographs for the live critique tomorrow. It is one image per person and it is um, 20, the first 20 images submitted that I will critique here in the group tomorrow. SRGB, no logos, no watermarks. Uh, maximum size, two megabytes but I'll put all of those details up there as well. So yeah, it's gonna be lots of fun. Um, next week, we've got even more planned for you. It's gonna be um, pretty cool. So yeah, thank you for joining me. And, and if you managed to stick with me the whole time, thank you so much. I'm sure it was boring. And <laughs> I'm gonna go and have some lunch, guys. Take care, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.